Okay, so we're going to build off of what we learned in the previous tutorial, which was uh, creating files, writing to a file, reading a file, all from Python. Now, <clears throat> as we saw that we could write a, sh we would, uh, when we write to a file, it was in string format, and when we brought it back from the file or uh, read it from the file, it was in a string format. Now, that can be a little um, problemsome when we go to do stuff with our files or in our program. Like, for example, say we want to put a list um, in a file and bring it back to us and work with that list. Well, there's a lot of steps we have to take, and there's better packages, which we'll learn about, like one called Pickle, another one, JSON, uh, that will allow us to better handle different objects other than a string. The one, the, what I showed you yesterday, which is basically the built-in uh, file handler with Python, is pretty limited to strings. But we can still work with objects. It's just a lot of work. So let's go ahead and look at this in, um, in, in, in this tutorial. Uh, it's going to be a lot of code, and it's probably going to be a very long tutorial. But you're going to learn a lot, and you're going to learn a lot about the Python programming language in itself because a lot of the steps we have to perform to actually convert strings to objects. So let's go ahead and get started. Python 3, to fire up our interpreter. All right, first one we're going to do is just a little warm-up session just to get you going um, because, you know, files are new to us, and what we want to do in this in this example is we're going to write a file, and we're actually going to cat concatenate the uh, new line escape sequence onto the end. This isn't actually converting anything, but this is actually warming you up just to get used to working with different data in um, a file and writing and reading it. So let's get started. Create a, a uh, string. It's going to be represented by the variable a. This is my string. All right, so there's our string. Now I'm going to create another variable b, and it's going to hold the string with my escape sequence in it. All right, now we're going to um, open our file or create our file. So open, and we're going to use the same one we used in the previous tutorial, so we're not writing a bunch of files to your desktop. So test one, and then we're going to use w to write. All right, um, next thing we're going to do is file.write. All right, so we got the write method, and I'm just going to put a plus b, because uh, a plus b is concatenation. Two strings, we can add them together, it's concatenation. All right, so we're going to do that. We'll get returned 18. So there's 18 characters or 18 index positions between the two of them. Cool. All right, so we're going to close the file so we can convert that to our actual file. So we're taking it from memory and putting it on the hard disk in a file on our desktop where it's currently located. And I don't know what I just hit, but my computer stopped responding. There we go. Uh, I lost my uh, keyboard there for a second. All right, so I... Create it to, or send it to the hard drive. Now we're going to open the file back up so we can access it again. So file dot, uh, not file dot, files can represent open. And then we'll do test one again. All right. And then we're going to do file dot read. And now we can see this is my string and we have the new, um, the new line escape sequence on there. Now, that's all good and everything, but that's pretty ugly. So how would we fix that? Let's just do um, file open again. So we can open up the file again. Test one. All right, and then we'll do uh, print file read. All right, and now we print the new we print the uh, string. And now you see it takes the raw string up here and actually enacts the escape character and prints a new or prints a new line, which is a blank line. All right, cool. So that's how we concatenate the data. So working with two strings, we add them together. All right, cool. Um, next one, what we're going to do is actually we're going to take our one we just worked on, and I want to go ahead and remove the escape sequence from that. Um, the one we just concatenated. So let's just do a file uh, open again and test one. All right, so we got that open. Then we're going to do text equal file. So if we're going to put it, um, the line that we're going to read 
into a variable for now, so we're going to temporarily save it, right? So we can access it from the variable. All right, and then we're going to do text dot rstrip. And what rstrip does, if we don't give it an argument, it's going to remove any white space. What is the new line escape sequence? It's white space. So I hit return, and there we go. It takes off the slash or the backslash n. All right, so we have no white space. So I just basically removed the concatenation that we did earlier. All right, pretty cool, right? Um, how about we convert the string data that we uh, send to a file that comes back to us into an integer? All right, you might need to do this at some point. So we're just going to do a is equal to one. All right, so that's a string. And then we're going to do file equal open. You're going to get sick of writing this. Test one and write. All right, so same way we've done a million times, and then file dot write. So we're gonna write a the integer to the file, and we're gonna do file dot close to actually convert it to our hard disk, and then file open test one. All right, and then we're gonna do uh, fl. Oh no, I don't know what that. Uh, what's from what are we doing? Integer. All right, number. So we need a variable to represent the conversion so we can use it somewhere in our code. All right. So we'll do int file.read line. Hit return, then call number, and we got our integer. But now that we got the integer, if you think about it, we can use this anywhere in our code. We could do something like number. Oops, I'm going to be on it. Number for this. One, we get two. All right, so what we did was we got some data from our our file and brought it back to us, which is pretty cool because, you know, we can now um, save data for later use. When we've seen in our in our previous tutorials, basically, we whenever we had the interpreter open, that was the only time we could actually use the data. But um, now we can use the data if we close the interpreter and bring it back up. So... That's really cool. So it's kind of like a database, right? All right. So how about a float? So let's do one with a float. We'll clear screen with Command K, and we'll do um, the same one again. So actually, uh, A is equal to one. So let's go ahead and do it this way. Let's do a file um, open. So instead of writing the whole thing out, we know that we have this writ written in our file that a is equal to one so all I'm going to do is do fl for float and we'll do float this is the conversion of float and do file dot read line and we'll call fl and now we got a float all right you see how that's done basically I left out opening up and creating the file and everything else with this one but hey what we did was we took a string of one and created a float so you could use that somewhere in your code um, about what else we want to do here how about we create a list let's create a list from a string that we write to a database so let's do uh, a is equal to 22 33 44 55 and that's good for now I'd pause the video for a second but um, all right so same thing as before file eagle open uh, test one W right man fat fingers all right <clears throat> and then we'll do file dot right a um, and then file dot close and then file eagle open test one all right so now we got it open now we need to read the line so i'm going to do collection this is going to be my variable that's going to hold the data from the string so file dot read line and then call collection just to make sure we got what we're looking for cool and then we're going to do final. This will be our final list. So we'll do collection dot split, the split method, split string method. 
which is going to split this into a list like that. Hit return, call final, and we got a list. But guess what? I want integers. I don't want a list of string numbers that would do nothing for me. So what we're going to do is num. It's going to be a variable that represents a list. And we're going to say int n for n oops, for n in final. So basically what we're doing here is doing a for loop. So it's going to go through and convert each number to a uh, integer and it's going to return it to us in a list format and if you don't understand this portion that's okay we'll be getting to this very shortly in a future tutorial and we'll call it num and now you see we got a list of integers pretty cool right so we went from this up here to this right here to this right here all the way to this it's a lot of work to get from up here to down here, but we're getting what we need. All right, so now we could use this this uh, list. We could be like num, and then we could pull out 33. All right, or we could do num, pull out 33, add num uh, to each other, something like that in our program. If that's something you want to do. All right. I know this may look a little confusing to you guys. Don't focus on, you know, the hard parts about it. It's basically all we did was right here, especially is probably a confusing part. We say, hey, integers, we want to convert the, um, each one of these to an integer. So it goes for loop, which means it iterates for, through each one. This is a temporary variable in says in final and this is our variable final so what it does is it loops through each one of them and converts them to integers all right pretty simple um just don't overthink it if you have any questions you know feel free to ask me at mastercode.online otherwise let's take a look at one more this one may be even more confusing to you converting a dictionary from a string all right it's the last one we're going to do i know it's pretty long a is equal to We'll do uh, double quotes for this one, and our curly brackets, and a name, and I'll put my name, you can put your name, and age, I'll put my real age, you put your real age, I don't really care what you guys put. Anyway, <clears throat> alright, so there's our list, let me just make sure, our, our dictionary I should say, it looks correct. Now we're going to do file, our favorite, open... Test one and uh, write. So we want to write the file and file uh, dot write a and file dot close to convert to the hard disk and file open test one. This got this is you know getting old to you guys by now. Should be able to do this in your sleep. Now we're going to do the same thing collection. All right, this is going to be a variable that represents what we read from the file. So file dot read line. And we actually call collection just to make sure it returns what we want. So we got a dictionary contained inside a string. Um, this one actually took me a little bit to think about how we we're going to do this because I haven't done this in very long. So we're gonna call, we're gonna do final, a variable to represent it, and eval function, which I'll explain in a second. Collection in there. What the eval uh, function does, basically it evaluates a string. And if the string contains an object, it will return an object to you. So a dictionary is an object, it's gonna return a dictionary. Um, all right, so that's basically what it does. Uh, if you know, don't overthink this either. Um, so we'll call final. Boom, there's our dictionary. All right, we can even check it with type uh, final dictionary. There you go. So what we did was we took a string, we wrote a string to a file, um, we converted that file to the hard disk in the actual file, then we opened the file back up, we read from the file, and which 
it was a string that had some curly braces and some uh, quotes and stuff and whatnot in it. So technically it is a string, it's not a dictionary at this point. And then we did the eval function, which evaluates a string. And if it's a object, it will return an object to us. And then we print it out, the, or we return the dictionary. If you guys have any questions about this, uh, please let me know at mastercode.online. And uh, in the next tutorial, I'll actually be showing you an easier way to handle objects with files. So um, we'll see you then. Have a good day.